Um, so can apps and games revolutionise sustainability? Um, can I have a show of hands if you think yes? Ooh, that looks about 50-50, which is very surprising. <laughs> um, so I've got a few examples that I'd like to show you. Um, I'll explain my role briefly. I'm the program manager for our BSc Honours Computing and Games Development, and one of the things that our students do in the second year that is maybe of interest to you is free prototyping for external clients. So, for example, we've done quite a lot of work with a medical school um, and trainees, doctors and nurses who've come up with some fantastic proposals for apps, having been out on, on practice, identified a possible solution, but don't have the resource to implement that solution. So some of those solutions have been brought forward to my second year, um, and my second year have been prototyping those apps uh, as a way of moving those ideas forward. Some of them have been very successful, some of them less successful, lots of lessons learned. So that's one of the things that, that, that I facilitate, and please come and talk to me if you're interested in that during the breaks. Um, I also run the development studio, the interactive system studio, which is big stand outside and we were concerned about whether we should even put our lights on today given the topic of the conference and the amount of hardware that we've got on the stand which is obviously an irony um, and again I would hope that some of the examples I would give you would show um, uh, would change your response to my first question today so how many of you are familiar with fold it show of hands all oh, very few okay so after 10 years of research into folding proteins to solve HIV. Um, Popovic and his team, now called the Baker Lab, put together a game and put it online. And that game allowed gamers or challenged gamers to fold proteins and to assist the software to come up with new proteins and challenged gamers to create new proteins and combine them and see what would happen. They solved the problem that scientists have been investigating for 10 years in 10 days. Um, if you don't believe me, just refer to the documentation online with Forbes, with Scientific American, and so on. But it's a very, very well-known example. It's four or five years old now. Um, <coughs> but an example of an online game captivating an audience who are fascinated with basically challenge and rewards, trying to solve problems. So, Obviously, the act of problem solving can be distributed. And the fantastic thing about this example, from my perspective, is it's, you're clearly crowdsourcing problem solving. Um, now, when you embed data, data collection analytics into your crowdsourced problem solving, you have the potential to create far more compelling arguments for your research, or your justifications for the actions that you're taking to address the challenges that we're talking about today. So I think it's just one that you should really be aware of, and I'd, I would be really pleased if you would follow this up. It's obviously not our work, it's just it's such a good example, we, we, could, we couldn't pass it by. Um, the second one I'd love to uh, communicate with you is um, more about crowd, crowdsourcing categorization. Um, so obviously when we're looking at how we sustain environments and societies, entities, organisms, resources, um, Understanding the impact of changes that we are causing is obviously a major topic of many of the talks here today. Um, so this is another example of game. So it's a beautifully crafted 3D virtual world, which many people would see as a complete time-wasting activity with young people spending a lot of time in these types of environments. But very simply put, the researchers had lots of images of organisms that they'd needed to categorise. So they'd been out on field trips, they collected all this information, and they didn't have the resource to categorise the, the vast variety of organisms that they'd, they'd collected. So they built a game where the game mechanic was basically enable the players to put these things together. So as a studio, what do we do? Well, we blatantly make games. Uh, we have a game on the App Store called Break to Win, which is a pure out-and-out -out racing game which has nothing to do with sustainability. However, the model for implementing it is freemium, so we're looking at giving away high-quality content and then resourcing it. So as a studio, we understand how to monetize and commercialize apps, get them paid for downstream of a launch, um, which may be significant. I guess the other, the other reason that we built this was to show that we could build very high-impact product on very... Um, accessible technology um, so, so the, the quality of the products that we have um, you can compare it to AAA studios on the same platform except that we're a team of four not a team of 300 with a time scale of months not years or even decades in the case of some franchises 
um, and we embed data and analytics for you. Um, this is an example of public engagement. So we have a paraglider that we created for the X-Play Festival, of which we're a gold sponsor, and I have a stop sign, so I'm going to flick through two subliminal sides of things that you can come and look at on the stand outside. I'd be delighted to talk to you and explain what we do in more depth. Thank you very much. Thank you.